welcome to the first edition of Think Tactical News Network. And we want to talk about uh, an Alabama student turned ISIS bride who wants to return to the United States. Hi, I'm Black Dragon, and welcome to the first edition of Think Tactical News Network. And this is a YouTube channel designed to help you to think and plan tactically, strategically, for the protection of your family in these trying times. You know, an interesting thing, a problem that they're having over in Europe now is all of the returning fighters that have come off of the battlefields of ISIS and the Taliban and things like that. Fighters who left uh, European countries to go and fight the Jihad and now have returned home. And they come with all the, uh, you know, things that people come with from battlefields, everything from post-stress disorder to, um, uh, uh, they have uh, physical handicaps, uh, war wounds, all kinds of things. And a lot are come back home with the same jihadi kind of ideas to create uproar and possibly terrorist cells in the countries that they return to. That's not something that we've uh, experienced a great deal of here in America, but uh, there have been quite a few fighters that left um, this country and went over to uh, places like Syria and now uh, with uh, the, the great losses that have been taken over there and the, the caliphate that's been dwindling, some of those folks are wanting to come back. And one such person, an Alabama student who turned ISIS bride, wants to return to the United States. And her name is Huda Muthanya. And Huda Muthanya was a uh, an ISIS, uh, or actually was a student uh, here in uh, America, and she decided that she would tear up her passport, or actually she would go over to Syria and be an ISIS bride, and oh my goodness, she did so many things. Uh, she celebrated with people who were killers of American forces, and she married over there, became an ISIS bride, and now she's stuck in Syria, and uh, she wants to come back home. And there were uh, quite a few things that were um, uh, were were interesting in in or, or that were there's a few things that were holding her up from coming back. Uh, one is that she was born to parents that were she was born in America, so uh, she could be a citizen, but uh, she was born to parents who, at that time, may have been. Uh, diplomats, which would then uh, mean that she's not a citizen. And what's interesting about that is that the President of the United States, uh, Donald Trump himself, weighed in on her case, uh, directing the Secretary of State, Pompeo, to deny her access to America, access to come back here. And um, so there, the critics are saying that she uh, should come back and face trial, uh, but she, and she has a right to come back because she's a citizen, but because there are some questions about her citizenship, um, that's, that's not easy. And uh, we're not sure how that will um, turn out. But for me, the more interesting question for, you know, a think tactical kind of uh, position is, do we want uh, these people who could be potential ISIS fighters back here on our show? We, we have a lot going on and with terrorism and stuff like that, um, it, it uh, could be a, uh, you know, how much of that do we, do we want to face? How much should we face? Is this a person that we should let here? And I believe that we have some uh, film on this, so we're going to run that film, and then uh, we'll get back to you on the other side. Go ahead and run that.
A local family is begging to get their daughter back after she fled the country to join ISIS. The 20 year old left her Hoover home and abandoned her faith to live a life of an extremist. WIET 42 news reporter Jamie Ostroff joins us live in Birmingham tonight to show us how it happened. Well, it actually happened in the palm of her hand. The family of Hoda Muthana says she used her cell phone to get on social media and contact members of ISIS planning her exit from the United States. Now, of course, this young woman is just one member of a very large community, but local Islamic leaders say her actions could actually put a lot of young people in our community in danger. And Hassan Shibli spoke on behalf of the Muthana family as though their daughter Hoda had just died. They have been going through unimaginable pain and hardship for the past few months. But as Shibli explained, the 20 year old from Hoover is alive and well in Syria. Hoda Muthana is a member of ISIS. She will have to answer to God for the pain and suffering she is putting her parents through. Hoda grew up in an Islamic home. Her family still prays at this mosque, but Shibley says about a year and a half ago, Hoda distanced herself from fellow worshippers. She had withdrawn from the Muslim community over a year before she left to join ISIS because she knew that the community was not sympathetic to those extremist idea uh, uh, groups. He says Hoda was communicating with Islamic extremists via social media. In this tweet sent shortly after she left the U.S., Hoda and three other Westerners show their passports. Bonfire soon. No need for these anymore, she writes, followed by the Arabic word for thanks be to God. While ISIS makes headlines almost daily committing acts of terror across the Middle East, Shibli warns of other horrors, horrors against the Islamic community right here at home. The youth of the community have been affected in that they are very scared. They're very scared that they may be blamed for the wrong actions of a uh, uh, you know, desperate, misguided, brainwashed young women. Local Islamic leaders are providing counseling to younger congregants to help them deal with potential bullying and to keep them from following in Hoda's footsteps. Through Shibley, Hoda's family did ask that everyone respect their privacy during this difficult time while they work with federal law enforcement to bring Hoda back to the United States safely and peacefully. We are live in Birmingham tonight. Jamie Ostroff, WIAT 42 News. Coverage you can count on. So um, one of my uh, writers, uh, when I put this story into th tacticalnewsnetwork.com, uh, or I think tacticalnews.com rather, um, one of my uh, subscribers wrote back, and this is a guy I've actually known for quite a while, uh, and his name was Larry G. Canada. And he said, this is a complicated subject. From the legal perspective, while she may have been born in New Jersey, which is not necessarily proven yet. If her parents were under a diplomatic passport, then the 14th Amendment would not apply to her. And she is not a citizen of the United States. If she is a citizen and she does get back in the country, then I say use 18 U.S. Code Section 2381, which defines treason and can be punishable by death. She joined an enemy who killed Americans and espoused the killing of Americans. She even called for the death of Americans. Sorry, can't take back treason. Regardless, her child is not automatically a U.S. citizen and therefore has no specific right to entry to the U.S. even if she is found, even if she is found to be a U.S. citizen. The child having only one U.S. parent, still not quite proven, would only be entitled to apply for naturalization, Canada says, and that is not assured in this case. Interesting case, but she should stay where she chose to be. Now that your ISIS brothers and sisters are losing the battle, don't expect most Americans to think you have had a real change of heart. Many will simply think you want to bring jihad and death back here, back home to our soil. Stay there or be tried and executed for treason if you come back home. But that's just my opinion. I think that might be the opinion of a lot of folks. I'd be interested to know your opinion. What do you think? Should we let this uh, returning ISIS soldier come back 
and uh, others? Or should we just uh, classify them as combatants or, or um, expatriate them and let them stay and rot where they are? Be curious to uh, know your ideas on the subject. Please leave the comments in the comment section below. You can read the story that we put up uh, at thinktacticalnews.com and uh, leave your uh, ideas over there. Don't forget to check out our podcast, which comes on twice weekly, which is Think Tactical, and you can get it right now on Spreaker.com. Well, we thank you all for tuning in, and uh, we ask that you be safe and considerate, and uh, always ever vigilant, and always be thinking tactical. <laughs>